Hello, and welcome to the fifth video, Little Bits of ABE Tips in the Creating the Conditions for Belonging series. Thank you for continuing the conversation with us. My name is Robin. And my name is Mel. Today we will talk about the importance of having an anti-bias education mindset when working to build respectful learning communities in which students trust adults and their peers. We will share a book recommendation with you, an activity to try on your own, and teacher reflection questions to help you consider the microaggressions your students may experience. When I was a classroom teacher, I always had a hard time with using the word respect because people experience and expect respect differently based on identity, culture, and lived experiences. At the start of the school year, it took weeks of collaborating and creating with my class how they wanted to be with each other in our classroom. I would ask my students, what does respect look like? feel like, sound like for you. When we have an anti-bias lens, we can develop young people's internal motivation to continue kind, respectful behavior towards all. We can help young people develop enduring intrinsic motivation when we help them see the real and positive outcomes of specific respectful actions. Frequent discussion of respectful actions and their outcomes is likely to contribute to transforming a code of ethics from a piece of paper to a core element of school climate. In my career as a teacher and coworker, eventually the definition of respect became clear to me for how I needed to be respectful towards others. With my students, I had an I can container, a decorated coffee can that at the beginning of the year started with I statements from me so that they knew what to expect from me and I could model for them how to be self-aware. Respect for me is I can listen non-judgmentally. I can be emotionally affirming and understanding. I can value others' opinions and feel confident in my own. I can overcome jealousy and envy feelings so as to become a collaborator and not a competitor. These are ways of being respectful that we can model and teach kids when intentionality about respect is missing, it can cause mistrust, identity disrespect, and conflict with peers and teachers. Before teaching the I can concepts, it is important to unpack what the students' definitions of respect are. How do you find out how students show respect at home and in their families? Expectations about respect at home and school can be very different. If we haven't taken the time to uncover how students' families show respect, we are likely to commit microaggressions. Psychologist, author, and Columbia University professor Professor Daryl Wing Sue describes microaggressions as the everyday slights, indignities, put downs, and insults that people of color, women, LGBTQ populations, or those who are marginalized experience in their day to day interactions with people. Microaggressions often appear to be a compliment but contain a meta communication or a hidden insult to the targeted groups in which it is delivered. People who engage in microaggressions are ordinary folks and experience themselves as good, moral, decent individuals. But microaggressions occur because they are outside of the level of conscious awareness of the person who's giving the comment. Sue and other researchers identified three types of racial microaggressions and over the years they have been expanded to include events and experiences of other marginalized identities. One includes microassaults, explicit verbal or nonverbal attacks meant to hurt someone. An example would be Archie Bunker from All in the Family, where every statement was a bigoted racist comment. Microinsults, insensitive communication that demeans someone's identity. South Park was written to have many characters be the joke due to their identity. Microinvalidations are negating the thoughts, experiences, or feelings of a person with a marginalized identity. For example, in The Simpsons, several characters that are stereotypical tropes are insulted for who they are. The more you are aware of the many different types of microaggressions that can happen, the less likely you are to commit a microaggression. Please see the teacher resources that are included with this video for examples of common microaggressions in the classroom. 
One book that addresses microaggressions and is about appreciating what makes us special is Always Anjali. In this book, Anjali receives a bike for her birthday. She and her friends are excited to get matching personalized license plates for their bikes, but Anjali can't find her name. To make matters worse, she gets teased for her different name and is so upset that she demands to change it. When her parents refuse, she discovers that her name means precious gift in Sanskrit. Using her creativity, she makes her own personalized license plate for her bike. She winds up learning to celebrate who she is and carry her name with pride and power. While microaggressions like mispronouncing a name may seem harmless, it can have a significant impact on a child's healthy identity and can cause anxiety, shame, or resentment which leads to mistrust and school disengagement. It is extremely important for educators to commit to learning the proper pronunciation of their students' names. As you play a key role in setting the tone for how students will treat each other, it is also important to correct others, children and adults, when you hear them mispronounce a student's name, as students will look to see your response. As you continue your anti-bias education journey and reflect on how microaggressions affect your students, consider the following teacher reflection questions. Which students in your class are or may be subject to microaggressions involving their names or nicknames? How might we be more aware of the microaggressions or disrespectful comments and behaviors our students experience? Which students in your class experience disrespect when it comes to their learning and ability? To create a brave, respectful classroom, we need to build identity safe environments and positive relationships with students and families. This is an ongoing process as relationships and respect continue to feed each other. Research shows that for every one negative comment a student hears in a classroom, there should be three positive comments to counteract and create a supportive learning environment. Motivational and effort building strategies positively shape student abilities about learning, foster a growth mindset, and create mind body states that are receptive to feedback and further learning. In his book, Engaging Students with Poverty in Mind Practical Strategies for Raising Achievement, Eric Jensen suggests strengthening the relationships between teachers and students by giving authentic positive feedback. Four ways you can do this are by Affirming students' abilities to learn. Affirming students' abilities to trust. Affirming students' choices, attitudes, and effort. And affirming students' cognitive capacity. Affirming students' efforts is important to reinforce a student's belief that their ability to learn is not fixed. When we are young, our brain has the ability to quickly adapt, adjust, and grow because of neuroplasticity. Studies have shown that a positive mindset, the belief they can do anything, is helped by specific positive reinforcement. One example statement is, your brain can grow and change. Let's make that happen with this new learning. When you affirm students' abilities to trust, you give students a reason to trust in you and they'll work harder. You can say something like, if you do your best and I do my best, we can tackle the tough stuff and feel good about what we have accomplished. The three big attributes of learning that are in students' control are their choice of learning or problem-solving strategies, their attitudes, and their level of effort. Use the dozens of daily teacher-student interactions you have as teachable moments that affirm these factors. When tapping into choice, say, I love how you used your creativity to make your work stand out. When it comes to attitudes, say, before you began, you knew you could succeed. I admire that optimistic, positive attitude. To focus on their effort, you could state, when you took on that challenging project, you must have known it was going to be a lot of work. You had to plan your steps, organize your resources, get help, and create a high-quality product. You did all that. Be proud of your accomplishments. Students who believe that they have unlimited reserves of focus, effort, and willpower try harder over the long haul than do those who think such resources are finite. 
The relationship between effort expended and classroom motivation and cognition is strong. To build resilience, affirm students' capacity to sustain effort by saying things like, I like that you refuse to give up, even when that task took a lot longer than expected. Remember, failure or struggles in the learning process are only a detour, not the destination. The extra effort you made will help you succeed again and again. You can find more examples of positive reinforcements on the teacher resource page that came along with this video. One practice we suggest to be intentional with your affirmations, try identifying three students to teach to focus your affirmations on. Commit to at least one affirmation for each of them that you can communicate with them within the next week. Additionally, teach students to give themselves and each other affirmations to continue creating reciprocal respect in your classroom. Provide a list of affirmation sentence starters for students to refer to when working with others. Collect ideas from students for other affirmations they can think of and add them to your list. Make this list accessible to all students and remind them it's available. Research from the Youth Voice Project concludes that there is a direct link between students who can identify relationships with trusted adults at school and positive outcomes. We know that students will engage with hard academic tasks longer, enjoy working hard, and think that it's okay to make mistakes while pursuing their academic goals. One of the critical aspects of building these relationships is showing respect and creating the conditions for belonging in your classroom. Feeling a strong connection to those we care about and who care about us can help us to reset our stress response and be prepared for a respectful day. Try a hugging meditation taken from Planting Seeds, Practicing Mindfulness with Children by Thich Nhat Hanh. Stand facing a family member or friend, look into their eyes and bow to each other. Hug slowly and gently. Take three deep breaths in each other's arms. With the first breath, focus your awareness on being alive and in the moment for yourself. With the second breath, focus on being aware that your family member or friend is alive and in the moment with you. With the third breath, focus on feeling happy and grateful to hold them in your arms. While slowly and gently hugging, set an intention as you breathe. Look at each other once again as you separate and offer each other a final bow. Together, you create connection and lasting respect. This meditation may seem out of place or feel awkward, but one of the things an educator can do to show respect in their classroom is to participate in self-care that fills them with connection and self-respect so that their needs are met. When they walk into the classroom, they can then be intentional and have the energy needed to give respect to all their students. If you create intentional space for the discovery and affirmation of students and their families' complex identities while fostering conversations that create curiosity and kindness around differences, adults and students alike become prepared to notice, name, and reject the bias or microaggressions that need to be interrupted. They can then replace them with positive communication and ways of being with each other. When adults at school can express unconditional positive regard for all students, families, and coworkers, it strengthens the web of positive connections that includes all members of the school community. We build ties that help everyone learn and thrive. We create respect that is given and received and strengthens belonging in your school. Thank you for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you again soon. Until then, please connect with us through social media and sign up for our monthly newsletter. Take care and goodbye.